on my workbench today I have a Panasonic uh, VCR. This one is a model number, what is this thing? It's a PV4250. Panasonic PV4250 on the bench today. My bench looks a little bit different because this is the first video I've done since my scope blew up and I've now got this beast that we're going to have to make do with and I'll apologize up front that you might not be able to see this, the display very well because the CRT is 54 years old on this thing and it's not very bright. It might be enough to get the job done but um, of course this scope was the one that used to sit up in the corner of my bench uh, out of the corner of my shop and I just used to use it as a as a scope clock. It's all I've been playing around with this thing for the last couple of years and up in that corner I've now put my old CRT monitor for my security cameras. Check this sucker out. If you want to talk burn in, that tube is burned in about as bad as I've ever seen. Uh, this little TV that I've got up here, this was probably one of the last ones that was made as an analog only TV. This TV was manufactured in 2009 which was after the analog TV uh, phase out in the United States but in Canada they allowed them to continue to sell analog TVs for another year or so. This one was made in 2009. I bought it. I think I paid $49 for this set at Walmart. It was one of the last ones that they had and what had happened is my old monitor that I'd been using my, for my security cameras packed it in and I went and bought this thing as a replacement. Of course, I've now replaced that now with, with a, an LCD set. But this one ran for, I guess, about, uh, about five or six years, 24 hours a day. And it burned the uh, image in that you see there. Watch when I turn it off. It's pretty bad. So that's now sitting up in the, in the space that my old scope that I used as a, as a clock used to sit. Just to put something up in that corner. And uh, this old beast will have to be on the bench until I get a replacement for it for my Watsu that the, uh, the high voltage block failed on. Anyway, back to this Panasonic. This one has a problem. Take a look at what it does on playback. There we go. You hear the sound? We have a problem in this set. Anyone want to care to guess? where that problem is before I pull the top off this thing. This was a real common failure on these units. Um, very common failure on these units. So I, I know what the problem is before I even troubleshoot, but I'm gonna go through the motions just to kind of guide you guys in the right direction. What we have on this, I'm just gonna turn that down so it doesn't get too annoying there. If I turn the volume down, we can actually hear it. Listen to the ticking. Hear the ticking sound there? What's actually happening in this is the capstan motor is not running at the correct speed. The speed is changing. It's changing up and down in speed, or, or it's momentarily stalling is what it's doing. So if we lift the top off this unit, I've already removed the screws. Let's take a look down the top and see if we can spot anything obvious. Of course, everything in the top looks normal. If I stop it, let's try and reverse. Okay, it's making a lot of noise in reverse search, as you can see. But the picture's reversing. If I go into forward search, But everything else appears to be kind of normal, except it just ate my tape. And I don't want it to eat my tape because this is my color bar tape that has, uh, I don't want it damaged in any unnecessarily, un unnecessary damage. So that was a symptom there. When I ejected it, it didn't eject. load and this time it won't even go into play interesting
You notice what had happened there. The capture motor had frozen and I just give it a bit of a push. So that might be a symptom. Let's see if I can get it to do that again. I pause it. Aha, it's stuck. It's not going anywhere. But if I give it a bit of a push by hand, now it goes. What could possibly be wrong with this machine? Do you guys care to guess? Okay, I guess you're not going to guess. I'll tell you what the problem with this is. I'm just going to find a piece of paper and draw it out so you guys can understand how this thing works. Why it's not working. Sorry for the crude drawings too because I'm not an artist, but... We have a three-phase motor. We have a... Actually, I think there's two of these FG sensors on here anyway to, to detect rotation. But anyway, we have a feedback circuit that provides a feedback signal into the caption drive IC that... that monitors the rotation of the rotor and there's also a, 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 a so there's a rotation or sometimes two rotation Hall effect sensors and there's usually a frequency generator also on there that determines the frequency of the uh, motor to provide feedback for the speed and this generates a three-phase signal which is driving the three coils in in sequence with respect to ground so basically a voltage is applied onto one and then the next one the voltage is is later and on the next one here the voltage is much later right so here's our here's our phases so we have our three phase supply so you have a pulse going into to the coil to move the motor in this direction and then it moves on to the next coil which moves the magnet and then it moves on to the next coil which moves the magnet that way so the rotor the the, the rotor is is a magnet on here and we're just changing our magnetic field and of course this is this produces an AC signal it's not just a, a one time one shot it's a it's an AC signal but the, the the AC signals are out of phase with each other right so we've got the AC signals are 100 and I think it's 120 degrees if I'm not mistaken 120 degrees out of phase right that's what your normal three phase cycle is 120, 240. So this is this is your zero phase. This one's 120 degrees, and this is 240 degrees. So you're you're forming a three phase motor, or you're forming a, a three phase AC waveform to make the rotor rotate. And what's happened here is we've lost a phase. That's why the motor is kind of doing what it's doing. The part that generates that is this IC right back here. That's the three-phase drive, PU3228. This other IC here is the capstan servo. So this is the one that determines the speed of the, uh, of the, of the motor. It it's, tells it to go faster or go slower. But this IC here is the one that actually generates the signal. Uh, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, a solder connection is broken on this IC. I can say that with confidence because this has happened so many times on these machines. I made an awful lot of money fixing these machines. This IC gets hot and you get heat stress, stresses on the pins. And I bet you if I were, I'm just going to resume the camera out so you guys can see the screen. I'm just going to put my finger in there and push on those pins and I bet you, I bet you it'll come back to normal when I do it. Ah, look at that. I didn't even have to put my scope on for that. This is it's embarrassing. I was hoping I was going to have to be able to use my scope to uh, fix this one, but that's the problem. We have a broken connection on this IC, and if I wiggle the IC like this, watch the pins on the back. Oh yeah, yeah. Good job, Panasonic. Let's. Uh, I'm going to pull the board out here. So I, I could probably solder that if I didn't, but I'm going to pull the chassis out just to do it anyway, just to make it a little neater, and that we can take a look at the motor on the bottom while I've got it apart. So to open these machines up, we just have to take out a couple screws. We'll pull the front panel off at first.
gonna remove two screws down through the chassis here. When I was fixing these in the shops, I didn't even bother to do this. I just stuck my soldering iron in the back and soldered the IC in place, but I'm taking it out so you guys can get a good look at what actually broke. And there's usually a couple screws on the bottom of these that you've got to be sure you take out or you're going to break the circuit board. There's uh, three of them. There's one down here. This is what a lot of people forget. Two of them are plastic thread type quick screws and one of them is a machine screw. The machine screw goes into that, that uh, hole there. Once we take out those screws, and we lift out the other two red screws on the front here. The chassis will actually pull out quite simple on this one, and it just it just unplugs. So we lift up, and uh, oh, one more, one more screw at the back here. It's been a while since I worked on these things. They're all red screws too. The whole chassis. In. Lift the chassis up. Put your hand down below to hold the circuit board in place and just lift, and it will pop out. Okay, here's what I was telling you here. There's your, that's your frequency generator. The Hall Effect sensors are going to be underneath the rotor, so if we pulled the rotor out, you would see them, but you've got six coils on here, two of them wired in series. So there's two coils there, there's two coils there, and there's two more coils there. So if we pull the motor apart, We'd be able to see them. I don't know if I should do that or not. I think to do that I got to take it all apart because it's this this uh, protrusion holds it in place. So I'm not going to pull the motor apart. Not in this video anyway. But let's take a look at what does break on these things. You can unplug this cord over to the hi-fi board. The blue stripe is the end here, pin number one. Okay, now we can get a better look at what actually goes wrong with this thing. If we look down on these connections here, you'll see that these ones here fail. You can see it. You can see them all. See the little cracks? This is IC2. And that's what happens with this thing. So, soldering iron out and we'll fix it so I'm going to put a bit of heat on these things just to get the make sure that these oh yeah they're all bad I mean you can see them all wiggling but they're all cracked again very common problem on this type of unit. I grabbed this machine I was going to I was going to uh, and I still will I had a viewer ask about control tracks and suggested I make a video to demonstrate what would happen if a control track was not being played or recorded and I thought okay I'll do that I'll, I'll get a machine and I'll disable the control track circuit so that we can look at what the uh, symptom is I didn't have to I grabbed first machine I grabbed didn't work go figure so, we actually got a legitimate repair out of this, but we'll see this one again because I will, I will do the control track uh, disabling on this thing for the next video. But, we've now fixed it. Let's just test it. 
So to put these ones back together, you just line up the, the whoops. Now, my, one of my plugs in the back here has kind of come apart again, so we're just going to kind of push it in place. There we go. Okay, we just line up the, the plugs in the back here. Like that, and just push them down, and then drop the machine in place. And then we can put some screws back in to hold it together. We'll see this machine again when it's time to uh, do the video on the control track. But I just want to secure it in place just so that it doesn't fall apart. Plug the, the hi fi audio cable back into the head preamp. Like that. Okay, should be good enough for testing. Let's turn it on. And it goes into play and it plays perfect. Other than the crunch that my tape got when it got eaten there. There you go. That is how you fix the uh, catch the motor drive IC. That's me causing mechanical shock. That's how you fix the catch the motor drive IC on one of these Panasonics. Very common problem. I can't tell you the number of these things I fixed in the field, but it was in the hundreds. It was a exceptionally common problem. Usually it came in and it said ate the tape. That was usually the symptom is it, it would it would the motor would stall or they would say i was watching it and it just stopped and went to a freeze frame and it wouldn't start up again and when i went to eject the tape it ate the tape that was usually the the uh, complaint and quite often that's the mode encoder switch that causes that when you have a mode encoder switch that goes bad it'll cause the tape to get eaten but not always this is another very common problem bad connections on that IC. When I used to fix these in the field, I never took the chassis out. I just pulled the wire out of the way and got my iron in there and, and did it. The reason I did it for you guys is so that you guys could see what I was doing. But normally, I would just solder that while it was in place and I would have the machine in and out of the shop, including cleaning the heads in 10 minutes and it was an $85 repair. And I would see 10 of them a week. Same fault. Very common problem on these machines. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.